Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to see the second packet. Sending second packet. So you have seen that initiator sent the first packet of the communication and responder sends the second packet. So we have already seen what happens in first packet, what information is shared in first packet, what parameters are sent in the first packet. If you haven't already, then you can go back to my previous video and go through that and understand how first packet works. Now come back to second packet. In the second packet, the, which is sent from the responder to the initiator, telling the initiator that these are the parameters that I like and I'm going to use. So second packet is from responder to the initiator. So this also goes on UDP 500. So source port will also be UDP 500. Destination port is UDP 500. If you remember, in the first packet, initiator sends phase one policies. It sends cookies. DOI and situation also sends NAT types. This was the information sent in first packet. The responder, when he replies for the first packet, he sends kind of similar things, except in the phase one policies, it sends only selected policy. Initiator may send more than one phase one policies, but the responder will select only one and the, the one that matches with the policy configured on itself. So let's say initiator has sent some couple of policies here and responder has one policy configured here. So it starts comparing them with the configured one. So it starts comparing them with the policy that it has already configured. So let's say it picks up the first one and matches with itself. Is it a match? Yes, no. If it matches, then it stays here. It doesn't go any further and sends this policy back but if it does not match then it picks up the second one that was sent and matches with the first one that it has configured so that's how it can you know compares these policies so it compares phase one policies sent with the policy configured on itself if that matches it selects that only matched policy that this is I'm going to use this is what we both have it matches with policies configured on me so let's use that. So it sends only the matched or uh, selected policy. Then it sends cookies. If you remember in the first packet, we had initiator cookie and responder cookie. Initiator cookie was calculated from initiator and responder cookie field was set to zero because we don't know what the responder cookie is. And it's the first packet of the communication, right? And this is a very brilliant idea to identify if you have a packet capture of you know the ike exchange and you want to know who, which is the first packet then you can simply look at the cookies information the packet which has responder cookie field set to zero is the first packet of the communication and then you can go on right so only the first packet of the ike exchange will have responder cookie field set to zero now in the reply packet in the second packet sent from the responder it sends selected phase one policy and then it sends the cookies back so initiator cookie still remains same and responder calculates its own cookie and puts that into the responder cookie field now it will also have a value here so responder cookie field will no longer be blank so it calculates the responder cookie the way it did in the first packet if you want to know more about cookies you can go back to my previous video and learn more about cookies how they are calculated what it what what is that they do all right next thing it sends the similar things doi domain of interpretation which is set to one which tells that this negotiation is for ipsec sends the situation which tells under situation which tells the situation under which the ipsec negotiation is taking place and it sends the selected nat t parameters okay so let's see the second packet once again i have taken out a screenshot of configuration where the where we have multiple policies configured if you can see policy number 10 policy number 20 on ASC 1 and policy number 10 on ASC 2 so this number 10 this number is locally significant it does not hold any significance when it is sent over to the remote end now you can see here we have two set of policies configured policy number 10 and 20 we have only one set of policy configured on the responder side so when initiator sends the first packet he sends these two policies in there when they reach to the responder 
the responder picks first of them and matches with the policy that it has configured if that matches then it stops there if it doesn't match then it picks up the next one and compares with the policy it has configured and so on so here in this situation does the first one match well it doesn't because here hash is md5 and here it is sha this does second one match second one is a match so second policy 20 matches with the policy 10 configured on the responder end so responder while sending the second packet it sends only the selected policy the responder also sends the responder cookies doi situation and it also sends selected net t parameters all right let's look at the packet capture in this packet capture you can see your six masses of ike exchange and three messages of quick mode so this is your quick mode this is main mode six packets are sent in main mode three packets are sent in quick mode and then it starts sending your encrypted data so this was the first packet sent from initiator to the responder if you notice the IP addresses, source IP is 1.1.1.1 and destination is 1112. The second packet is sent from responder, which is 1.1.1.2, to the initiator 1111. Right? Let's open them up. In this video, our focus is going to be on the second packet of the communication. But just to show you what, what was sent in the first packet, let's open up the first packet as well go to the security association payload proposals if you notice here there are two transform payloads here because the initiator had two policies configured and that's how it that's how it is sending two policies here two phase one policies if you see there are two set of policies that it is sending so if I scroll it up this is policy number one where it sends aes sha pre shared key and lifetime 86 400 this is policy number two where it sends aes md5 and pre shared key lifetime 86 400 right so these are two set of policies that were sent in the first packet let's go back to the second one in the second packet the responder only selects one so if i close this packet and open it again you see in security association payload there is only one proposal only one transform set and it is the selected one right so they have selected aes md5 appreciate key lifetime 86 400 and they've also selected an at t type so if you look i'm going to close this one so here only one nat t parameter has been selected only one nat t type has been selected if i go back to the first packet there are going to be multiple nat t parameters vendor ids that it sent if you see if you look here it's nat t ike 02 nat t ike 03 and nat traversal in ike which is as per the rfc 3947 is the responder sending all three of them back no responder is only sending one of them which is which it also supports which the responder also supports so responder also supports rfc 3947 so they ended up matching 394 rfc 3947 nat t if I open it up, you will see it also sends a vendor ID field here, so it it will also be same. If you if you want to compare it, you can see 452F. Go back to the first packet and open up the that traversal. Uh, here it is, 452F. So they are same. And these are your cookies. So in the first packet, initiator sends initiator cookie and responder cookie field remains blank. But in the second packet, which is sent from the responder to the initiator, the responder sends the responder cookies, which are represented as responder SPI here. So you see responder cookie field has some value now. And initiator cookie is set to 10A4. So if I go back to the first packet and show you what was the initiator cookie, it is going to be same. So the initiator cookie was 10A4 and responder cookie field was set to 0. Right? But in the second packet, the responder has calculated its own cookie and put in the value there. So that's all about the second packet. Move on to the third one. And one more key piece of information. After sending the first packet, initiator went into a state mm wait message 2. That means I have sent the first packet and now I'm waiting for the second packet to be received. When the responder sent the second packet, after sending the second packet it goes into a state guess what 
you got it right mm weight masses 3 I have sent the second packet and waiting for the third packet to be received these messages knowing about these messages why you are stuck at this message state will help you to troubleshoot the issues that you encounter if you think this has been informational to you would you care to share it with your friends I hope to bring more informational videos for you thank you for watching it please do like comment and share and subscribe to my channel